Good morning. Welcome to our Lord's house in this fourth Sunday in Advent. We are here because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And we are one week away from Christmas, unless Jesus comes back first. Either way, what a Christmas gift that would be if he does come before Christmas. But all, all the same, he's got us good in his hands, and uh, we are blessed to have that gift from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who came to be one of us. As we're preparing for celebration of Christmas and as always being ready for our Lord's return, uh, a few things for our awareness. Um, I understand that there's some misprint on the website for service times for Christmas Eve. The correct times are 4.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. And so do spread the word. And if anyone asks you, let them know, 4.30 and 7. But we will have people here regardless. And so even if people show up earlier or in the midst of stuff, um, we will have God's people here. But 4.30 and 7 are the official start times for those services. And Christmas morning will be at 9 o'clock regular Sunday service time. It's a little Easter as well as Christmas Day. And so we'll celebrate with communion in all three services, on uh, the two on Christmas Eve at 4.30 and at 7, and 9 o'clock on Sunday morning for Christmas morning. And uh, again, those are our service times. Wednesday, uh, instead of an evening worship service in the sanctuary, we are going to be serving our community. In the afternoon, if you can come about 3 o'clock to the basement, we're going to start making Christmas cards. And then we're going to have a soup potluck about 5 o'clock. And then after we eat, we're going to go caroling and distribute some of those cards in the area. And so if you can't come right away at 3, just come when you can. And uh, we'll serve our community with the love of Jesus Christ and enjoy one another's fellowship and uh, prepare for everyone's hearts to hear that Jesus, again, is Savior and Lord. So those are the worship opportunities for this, this coming week. And this afternoon, if uh, you're able to come at 3.30 to help set up the outdoor nativity, you're welcome to come at 3.30 in, in the afternoon and uh, dress warmly and uh, get a picture of what it might have been for Mary and Joseph being outside. And, uh, and so to help uh, let those who pass by these grounds know that, uh, again, we worship Jesus as King, as Lord, and that uh, his humble beginnings were very humble. And uh, so 3.30 this afternoon, if you can come to help set up that nativity. The new member adult confirmation refresher class will resume after the holidays, so keep your eyes tuned for when, when that starts up again on Thursday evenings. The Women's Bible Study, The Wonder of Advent, will meet this Thursday uh, at 6 to 8 p.m. in the church basement, and the, the Wonder of Advent led by Ashley Robinson. If you still need some Christmas cards, uh, there are some boxes and individual cards available for sale in the back, and the prices are as marked, uh, and 50 cents per card or boxes as marked. Your 2023 offering envelopes are in the mailboxes in the back. If you haven't picked yours up yet, please do so before you leave today. And then start to use them after the turn of the year so that the 22 records and 23 records don't get mixed up with, with those numbers on the envelopes. I um, would like to report to you that Don Godeman, one of the teachers that we called the other Sunday, uh, after considering faithfully, our call has returned that call to us, and so we thank God for her consideration of that call and uh, ask God to bless her and her ministry that continues in Lodi, California. Uh, our other call that is out to Michelle Mickey Angerman is still uh, being considered. She was hoping to come visit this weekend, but the roads just were not doable uh, for them coming from Minnesota. So continue to keep Mickey in your prayers as she considers our call to be our principal and, and one of our teachers. And so uh, that's the newest, newest updates. And uh, let's stand, let's greet one another as the people of Christ, and let us worship.
join in prayer. Dear gracious God and Father, we thank you again for your presence among us. We ask that as we sit at your feet to hear your word, you continue to guide us with your message of hope, of love, of life, and also that reminder that you came to be one of us because we needed a Savior. And you yourself said you would do it yourself, the only one who could. And Lord, we thank you for your gift of yourself. And today, as we receive your body and blood, together with the bread and wine for our forgiveness, to strengthen our faith, and for us to proclaim your death and your resurrection until you return. Lord, as we come to your altar again, we come thanking you for becoming one of us, God with us, so that we can be with you forever in your halls of heaven. In your name, Christ, we pray this. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, hymn 338. Again, as we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Let us now make confession of our sins to God, our gracious Heavenly Father. Eternal God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and that sin is ever present in our lives. O oh God, in your mercy, forgive our sin. Redirect and renew us that we may joyfully follow your will and gladly obey your commandments. Graciously forgive our sins and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, guide us in ways of compassion and love. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. 
more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come among us with your abiding presence. By the power of your Spirit, direct our lives to expressions of repentant joy. Bless our devotion and our prayers, and lead us in ways of faithfulness as we await your final coming in glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We hear the word of the Lord. Good morning. Morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and give, and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. The Lord will bring on, on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart from, for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his Son, who as to, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and for his name's sake, we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are also who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of our Lord Jesus as we hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Having heard God's word together, we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We join in singing our next hymn, Jesus Came, the Heavens Adoring, hymn 353. God's mercy, grace, and peace are yours in Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives. Amen. Will you please join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, God with us, Emmanuel. For all that, that brings comfort for us, to know that you are with us every single step of the way as you lead us to your home. Lord, we ask that you continue to guide us as we place our footsteps one in front of the other. And as you place people in our paths who need that same comfort, those who do not yet know you as Savior and Lord, as well as the continual encouragement to our brothers and sisters in Christ, that you have come to be with us. And not just to be around us and with us, but to identify with us so much 
that you took on our sins upon yourself on the cross so that we wouldn't have to bear them anymore and that we would be free from them and risen with you to enter eternal life as your forgiven children. And so, Lord Jesus, as we proclaim your life, your death, your resurrection, and your coming again, we ask that you give us extra special joy this Christmas season and even beyond the Christmas season until you return so that everyone who meets us knows that you are the light that is within us, brightening this darkened world, darkened with sin. But your light casts out the darkness. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, as we hear your word from the prophet Isaiah, connect it with the rest of Scripture, that all of the words that I say and the thoughts that go on inside all of our hearts and minds as we hear your word, as we ponder it, take it to heart, and as we put it into action in our lives, Lord, that all of our thoughts, words, and deeds would truly be pleasing, perfect, and holy in your sight. For you are our Savior, our risen Redeemer, our foundational rock upon whom we are built upon and upon whom we stand. In your name, Jesus, we pray this. Amen. We continue to look at the Messiah through the prophet Isaiah's eyes. And today we go back to chapter 7, the sign of Emmanuel. And this is a word that is common to us. We have heard it over the years. The virgin shall be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. But to really grasp even better what all of that meant to the people in Isaiah's day when that was first proclaimed, there's a whole lot more backstory. So buckle your seatbelts. We're ready to go back 2,700 some years. And if they would have had street signs in Isaiah's day that look like ours, this is one of the things that possibly Isaiah would have said. King Ahaz, here's your sign. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right, don't go backwards, don't go forwards. We're going to hear more of why. But what is the direction that is not posted on that sign where Ahaz should be going? Upwards. Ahaz, you're not looking upwards to your God. So let's go to the parallel in 2 Kings 16. In the 17th year of Pekah, son of Ramalia, Ahaz, son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. Unlike David, his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord his God. A quick summary, what did he do that was not right in the eyes of the Lord his God? He made a replica of an altar that he saw in Damascus, a foreign altar to a foreign god. And he brought the design back to Jerusalem and replaced the altar of God in the temple with this altar. It's not just a remodeling. I like what this other god did better than what you have given us all these years, God. He used items in the temple for idol worship. You shall have no other gods before me. He closed the temple doors to the people. He had altars built everywhere around the land. He was not listening to the Lord his God. What else did he do? Ahaz sent messengers to say to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, I am your servant and son. A lot of translations say, I am your servant and vassal, your underling, your subject. When you look at the Hebrew, what he says is, I am your servant and son. That carries a lot more weight when you are a king of Judah. 
listen up. Come and save me out of the hand of the king of Aram and the king of Israel who are attacking me. Meanwhile, when Ahaz says that to Tiglath-Pileser, the king of Assyria, who's really the overpowering enemy of both Aram and Israel and Judah, what's going on probably in heaven? You can almost picture God doing a face palm. Who's your true God, father and king, Ahaz? Look at what you're doing. You're forsaking me. You're rejecting me as your king, as your father. I am your servant and son, Ahaz said to King Tiglath-Pileser of Assyria, a false god worshiper. Even more so. Let's go to Psalm 2. A psalm that was often used at the coronation of the kings, the sons of David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. And he said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And while these words are, of course, pointing to Jesus, the promised son of David, these words used at coronations of the sons of David, his descendants, sitting on his throne, in that line, according to God's promise, you will always have a son sit on your throne until it comes to whom it belongs. Who should Ahaz have always recognized as his father and as his God? And yet he tells Tiglath-Pileser, you're my father. Oh my goodness. You see why things are not going well? Then the Lord said to Isaiah, but get this, even though God knows that Ahaz has been rejecting him, he still calls out to him, still tries to turn him back and turn his heart around. He sent the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to Isaiah, go out, you and your son Shear Yashub, whose name means a remnant shall return. A name with a message. When King Ahaz has Isaiah's son, a remnant shall return. Words that, again, God is in control. Take your son to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the washerman's field. God knows exactly where Ahaz is. God knows exactly what's going on. He's not just sitting up in heaven in a lazy boy, reclining and watching things go by. He knows exactly what's going on in your life and my life and in everyone's life in this world. Yes, he is still involved in his people's lives. Isaiah say to Ahaz, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and of the son of Ramalia. Keep calm and don't be afraid. They're burnt ends of a stick. Their fire's going to die out. But a remnant shall return, Ahaz. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. I know what's going on in your life and exactly where you are. Yet this is what the Lord says. It will not take place what you think is going to happen. Yes, they're outside Jerusalem. They're trying to set a siege around you. But they're just the burnt ends of a stick. I've got a bigger picture, Ahaz. It will not take place. It will not happen. Yes, God is aware of 
and cares about your daily details too. Just as he knew exactly where Ahaz was, sent Isaiah to speak to him, God has given you his word and says, I'm with you always, and I know where you are. I know what's going on in your life. I know, and I truly care. And then God tells Isaiah, speak these words to Ahaz. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand firm at all. Ahaz, you represent me to the people of Judah. You represent me to the other kings of this world. If you do not stand firm in your faith, Ahaz, which by the way, you're not doing such a good job right now, Ahaz, you won't stand at all. But you can turn it around on a, on a shekel. Israelite coin can turn it around on a dime, we'd say. Stand in your faith, Ahaz. Remember what God did for the Israelites when they were standing before the Red Sea with Pharaoh's army right behind them. Yes, they cried out in fear, but God said through Moses, watch and see what the arm of the Lord will do for you. He will rescue you. And God led them through on dry ground. Ahaz should have learned his history lessons better. Our Lord reminds us, yes, learn from the past. I've been active in everyone's life, and I will see you through, and I know the details of your daily days. I'm with you. And again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. After he said, stand firm in your faith, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. The sky's not the limit, Ahaz. The deepest depths of the ocean aren't the limit, Ahaz. But what did Ahaz reply? Ahaz said, I won't ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Sounds like a humble reply, doesn't it? that Ahaz is being a good, pious king. Oh, I won't ask you, Lord. I won't ask you for a sign. But God told him to ask him for a sign. And the sky and beyond were the limits. Ahaz, when God tells you to do something and he told you don't hold back, nothing is impossible with God. Don't get all... Mr. Righteous on me when I know your heart, Ahaz. Ahaz, you've defeated yourself already. What you think will save you an alliance with Tiglath Pileser, who's stronger than Samaria and Syria, he'll become your worst nightmare. If you look to the things of the world, if you look peripherally around you instead of up, to the perspective that the Lord in heaven has as he sits on his throne and laughs at the kings of the world, Ahaz, stop. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left, don't go backwards, don't go forwards, look up and go where I lead you. I told you to ask me for a sign, Ahaz. Then Ahaz said, hear now you house of David. He's addressing more than just Ahaz. Ahaz, you represent all of the line of the sons of David. And I'm speaking to you and those in your government. Not only you, Ahaz. Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Notice how he addresses Ahaz doesn't say your God. You've already forsaken your God. You try in the patience of my God also as Isaiah speaks for the Lord. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. You didn't want to ask for it, but he's going to give it to you anyway. And this is the sign Ahaz. 
The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. But there's more Ahaz. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. Samaria and Syria will not be surrounding you. The Lord will bring on you, though, and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. He will be the king of Assyria. What you're looking to now for your relief will become your greatest nightmare. You said, I'll be your servant and son. He's going to take your words, Ahaz, but he won't treat you like a son. He'll treat you worse. He will treat your people worse. The horrors of war will be what you are trying to avoid. You should have turned your heart to me, Ahaz. And then in the next chapter of Isaiah 8, here's a partial fulfillment of God's sign to Ahaz. Isaiah says, Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. And the Lord said to me, Name him Maher Shalal Hashbaz, which means quick, quick, to the, quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil. I feel sorry for that boy having to write his name out in school. But every time people would see him, Quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil. Hey, quick to the plunder, swift to the spoil, come over here. <laughs> His name again was to be part of that message to Ahaz. And before the boy knows how to say my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria will be carried off by the king of Assyria. And the Lord spoke to me again, says Isaiah, because this people has rejected the gently flowing waters of Shiloh and rejoices over Rezin and the son of Ramalia, therefore the Lord is about to bring against them the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria with all his pomp. Its outspread wings will cover the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. Yes, this sign was still alive and active and people would see God was still with them wanted to be with them. But he would take out the other enemies. Raise the war cry, you nations, be shattered. Listen, all you distant lands, prepare for battle and be shattered. Devise your strategy, but it'll be thwarted. Propose your plan, but it will not stand, for God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. You can make your earthly plans but the Lord in heaven sits on his throne and laughs at the kings of this earth. And yes, it was more than just the sons of David sitting on the throne that were his anointed ones. This sign of Emmanuel would be fully fulfilled. People had to wait even longer. Again, God knows our daily details. And we also have to wait for his timing of what he is doing to carry out his entire plans and purposes. There was a partial fulfillment in Ahaz's time. But God was speaking so much more than just one little boy named Maher Shalal Hashbaz. He said there's going to be Emmanuel. And here's when it got fulfilled. The complete fulfillment of God's sign. Luke records it in chapter 1. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Emmanuel, God is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. 
you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. The Lord saves. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, the Anointed One. And the Lord in heaven sits enthroned over all the earth and laughs at the kings of the earth and says, Here's my boy. Mary's heart was different than Ahaz's. And God fulfilled that sign completely with his own son. So, child of God, yes, you. Here's your victorious sign for whatever or whoever is up against you. The Son of God, the Anointed One, who now sits with his Father on the throne in heaven, having lived the perfect life, having taken your sins and my sins and the whole sins worlds upon himself on the cross, suffered hell in our place, and then came back from the dead, alive and is alive today, and has ascended and is waiting to come back. Here's your victorious sign. <coughs> for whatever or whoever is up against you. And remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the powers, the forces of Satan. But Christ has conquered, and here's your victorious sign. By the way, if God does say to one of us or to all of us, ask me for a sign, we say, yes, Lord. But note, he has given us the sign of his Son, first and foremost, completely fulfilled, not only what he told Ahaz, but told the whole house of Judah. And he speaks to this world. Here's your victorious sign. Just stop where you are in the midst of the Christmas hustle and bustle. Don't go left, don't go right, don't go forwards or backwards. Look up. Be ready for your Lord to return. But then follow in his footsteps where he's leading you. Look for where Jesus is walking and where Jesus is busy. Who he wants to help. Who is crying out for help from the Lord. People who are asking for a sign from God. And give them the sign of Jesus the crucified and risen and ascended one. And we can then also say, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers, my sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So in these remaining days before Christmas, proclaim Christ. However you decorate, however you sing, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And let his victorious sign of his cross and his empty tomb lead your way. And tell death, death, you have no victory. You have no sting. But I live in the comfort and the care of Christ. So stand firm. Stand firm in your faith. You will not fail. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know your labor is not in vain. In the name of Jesus, amen. And the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, your sign from the Father. 
Amen. We now continue our worship as we return our tithes and offerings to the Lord for his kingdom work. And while we do that, we sing, O bless the Lord, my soul, hymn 814. Please stand as we join in the prayer of the church. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may please you in all things. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel Satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, be released from their afflictions. We pray in particular for Kristen, Courtney, Reagan, Elaine Trainer, Bill Berry, Sue Robinson, Kenny Krupka, Tammy Kramer, Doreen Meyer, Marge Elsasser, May Lund, Don Sharman, Eleanor Esch, Darren Trainer, Nancy Rose, Amanda Bird, and Pastor Mike Belinsky. We pray for the healing and strength according to your will for each and every one of them, Lord. We also pray for the comfort of the resurrection for the family of Al and Cindy Stiggy on the death of Cindy's father, Dwayne Benny, on December 7th. Remind them, Lord, that you are with them always, God with us, and that you are the risen one, and wipe away their tears. Lord, we give you thanks for the 61st anniversary of Duane and Ardeth Schultz yesterday. We thank you for their witness of your love in their marriage and in their life. Lord, we pray that we would follow in your example of your love for us as we walk in your ways, Lord Jesus. We continue to pray for Michelle Mickey Angerman, whom we have called to be principal and teacher here. Continue to guide her in her thoughts of how you will use her in her ministry. Lord, we also thank you for Don Godeman and for her considering our call. And even though she has returned it to us, we ask you to bless her in her current ministry in Lodi, California, leading your little lambs in the ways of Jesus. 
And Lord, continue to provide for our needs for our school. Bless all of our teachers and our students as we head into the Christmas break. We also pray for all who serve and protect in police, fire, EMTs, first responders, healthcare workers, and all military personnel and their families, especially in this holiday season. Remind them that you are with them always as they stand watch. In your name, Jesus, we also ask that you care for those who have gone on our behalf to foreign lands with your word, in particular, Jana Engelhart and Josh Lang and family and Ruth Mattia. Bless the efforts of theirs with your word, and we know that your word will not return to you empty, but will accomplish the, de the results that you desire, which is people coming to faith. We pray all this through Je Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord our God, for you have had mercy on us and sent your only begotten Son, the long hoped for Messiah, to bring us salvation. Pour out upon us the gifts of your Spirit, that we may receive your blessings joyfully and resolutely serve you in all we do. Grant that we may receive the body and blood of our Lord as the guarantee of our salvation and as a foretaste of the feast to come in your eternal kingdom. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and praise, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table. TJ, take and eat Christ's true body, which he gave in the death for you.
Spirit raise your happy shouts of praise. Please stand. May this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you firm in faith until everlasting life. Depart in peace and joy for his service. Amen. We pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for having fed us with the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Continue with your gracious presence among us and bless our coming in and our going out this day and each day of our earthly lives. Graciously hear our prayers and grant all that is best for us according to your loving will. Grant us your abiding peace as we await your eternal kingdom. In the name of Jesus, our Advent hope, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join with our closing hymn, Crown Him the Lord of Advent. Crown him the Lord of hope, the life, the truth, the way, whose word lights up and guides your path for each and every day. And trust each day and night to him who won the fight and offers hope, peace, joy, and love. Until there is no night. Crown him the Prince of Peace, who comforts heart and mind, who takes and heals your sicknesses, disease of every kind. Death's burden is no more, since open is heaven's door. Hope, peace, joy, and love with life forevermore. Crown him the Lord of joy, the radiance from on high, the one born as a baby boy, his next advent is nigh. Lift up your heads, you gaze. With praise you swing and sway, resounding hope, peace, joy, and love in all you do and say. Crown him the Lord of love, who conquers all your fears, who sent his spirit as a dove and wipes away your tears. Your victory is won. Tell all what he has done to bring his hope, peace, joy, and love to each and every one. Go now in hope, peace, joy, and love. Have a blessed Christmas and spread the word of service times, and as you travel as well, bring Jesus to all whom you meet.